before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am joined here today with my friends Jay and April from Spiritually Raw and Gnostic TV. How are you guys doing this morning? Right. It's so great was good. to see you. Thank you so much. You're like radiant. I was about to say you signed on, and I was like, that top is popping on you, April. I love it. It's just so beautiful. So well, we have a really important conversation, and I, I kind of wanted to get a little bit like personal with our audience especially with um the age demographic you know my age i'm 41 so we're looking at like the zennials the late generation x the elder millennials the people that are coming up to their midlife and i was telling you guys that i i get sucked into these like tiktoks these instagram stories and i'm seeing these heartbreaking stories of people in my age group who are being like i i followed the rules i i, I went I got my bachelor's, I got my master's, I got the corporate job. I've been working 80 hours a week since I got out of college and I still can't afford my life. I don't have a retirement. I'm not my, I did what my parents told me to do. And, and a lot of people are pulling up the graphs of how much inflation has happened. Like it's just, it's just like a no win game at this point in the matrix. And I was telling you guys, like, it's just heartbreaking to see, you know, where my parents were at 41 is not where I am or where my my um my peers are because of the the matrix because the game is not fair, the game is rigged. And so um but the beautiful thing is is you've got a choice, right? You can play that game or you can play another game. And so I wanted to kind of shift and be like, let's look at the other game for a second. So do you guys want to take it from there? Well, you know what? That's an interesting thought though. Is the game really rigged? Or have we just been taught to believe it's rigged to take us off our path? That's a good point. Right? Because when you think about it, I don't think the game is really rigged. If you came into this this planet and let's say you, instead of landing in Georgia or the south of Florida, you, you landed in some exotic island and you didn't know the difference between anything other than this beautiful exotic island and that's what you grew up in and that was your environment um so to say the game is right i have to really question that i don't think it is i think we have been brainwashed to believe that it is but it's interesting what you said earlier that you know people are working 80 hours a week and they're it, you know and, and they can't snap the the pieces together and they feel like they're working paycheck to paycheck and a lot of that may have to do with exactly what you said. It's the reverse, right? It's like the 80-20 rule where what that person or th those people are doing, they're spending 80% of their time in trying to um, create this project or get to this level. And they're putting all of all 20, 80 percent of all this energy into the physical part of trying to create this yeah. where the reverse is actually how you do it if yeah. you flip that table and you take and, and then that so that would leave 80 percent of the actual physical trying to move it right and that only leaves a small 20 percent to focus on yourself your well-being your mindset now if you take that philosophy and you flip it 
Think about what's going to happen. You are now taking 80% of that energy and you're focusing it on bettering your life, working on your mindset, focusing on what it takes to make your life a better place to live. And when you take that you flip that table and you're putting that 80% into your well-being and your happiness, that other 20% of the creation is going to fly because yeah. you're you have you you're you're taking the time to look within, you're taking the time to be able to hear the messages and retrieve the messages. You're taking that time to expand on your intuition. You're taking that time everybody has all the answers within. Yeah. We've been led yeah. to believe all the answers are out right that's that 80 percent. you're looking 80 80 percent of the time you're looking where is it where is it where is it? how do i get it you got to stop and take a moment so i think that that is a phenomenal way and it's a hard for some people it's almost like a hard dynamic to shift because you you for, for i mean if you figure if you're 30 40 50 years old you're been wired to work and function at that 80% and only leaving yourself 20%. So, yeah. you know, another thing too, Bryce, I'll tell you is like, you mentioned or something earlier, about I've lived by the rules and I live by the rules and I got it. Well, I mean, at some point in time, there's gotta be a, you know, we've all been given clues that the rules need to be changed throughout our lifetime. As we get older, as we get wiser, then we have to change those rules. So if you're stuck at 40 and 50 and you went by the rules, then maybe, you know, look back and try to process the signposts that you have that these rules need to be broken if they don't fit into your plans. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I was just thinking that, it's like, why is you saying that? Because, like, I have a friend that is miserable at her job and she calls me and, you know, yeah, she's making a decent living, but she cries every day after work. And it just, in my, in my mind, I see it like her, a car with a spinning wheel with mud just splattering. And so you think about that quality of life, but that that entrapment of the mind where I think I have to stay here, you know, and and, and that's something that I have to rock on. Even my boyfriend even points it out to me. I went to a very um, and he always blames it on my this high school I went to. I went to a very um, intense private high college prep high school and they beat. I mean, I, I actually believe it was academic abuse. They beat us down. And so I have a hard time in my personal life just having fun like I think I always have to be working and at 41 my boyfriend was like this is from Darlington like you understand this is not normal and so for even for me it's that reprogramming of the quality of life you know and so I think too and you know for people like I, I often think like are we choosing to be enslaved like is the gate to the cage actually open and we just have to push it open but we're and it starts young like we start with these preschoolers these kindergartners that are told to sit and sit still in a seat for eight hours a day. Well, right? I think that we time. are, uh, I think that like the, the, the kids, you know what I mean? That are told to sit. I mean, obviously they're still working through their processing. They like, need what to the play. Yeah. Doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're but still think, trying to not wet their pants. So right, exactly. Right. And then, you know, but uh, I think once you get to a certain point, then, um, then there's no victims. There's willing participants. You know what I mean? It is really what happens. I mean, you get to a certain point in your life where you choose to continue. So if you don't, you know, I mean, every study in the world, 2024 says how many graduates come out with a degree out of college and are and are not even doing that degree. Right. Yet there's still droves of people going to college to get that same degree, which there's so much evidence, years and years of nobody making any money with that degree, but yet they still go there. So again, if you continue that path and you see that, look, someone's saying to you that this is how it is. I mean, you know, that that's on you. You know what I mean? Honestly, like I said, that's on you. That's not the, that's not a, I don't necessarily believe that, you know, someone's being like, you know, because they're telling us, look, this shit doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it might have worked for your parents, but doesn't, I mean, I was the first generation, you know, when my parents were coming along, my dad's a veterinarian. So he went all to lots of school. My mother has her bachelor's. We were told, like, you just need your bachelor's, it's fine. But then as I got older, I was like, oh, now you need your master's. It's like the, the ante keeps getting up. And it's interesting. This kind of gets into spirituality, too. Obviously, I think we all three agree. It all, it's all based in spirituality, right? We have these patterns that we develop. And so sometimes we get into these habits or these patterns of, like, like you're saying, all these kids are going to these universities and getting these degrees. 
they're spending thousands and thousands of dollars taking out student loans for a worthless piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But they've been programmed to think that's valuable when the reality, it's like that cognitive dissonance, right? Like the reality is it isn't. And that's a pattern that has to be broken in your thought process. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can take time. But the first the first step is just like AA meetings, right? The right. first step is recognizing that there's a problem, is right. recognizing the pattern for what it is. So I guess my question to you guys, because you guys have really worked on this. Like I would say this is like your Mia call. Like you guys have like really worked on figuring this out. And so what would your advice be if someone goes, holy crap, watching right now one of our friends, I I I understand why I'm depressed now. Absolutely. I'm in a, I'm run, I'm running off of a pattern that I know that actually isn't serving me. And I recognize that what's the first step of trying to course correct that for somebody. Um, I don't think there's any other way to do it, but to just cold Turkey, you have to stop the pattern. You have to break the mental, physical abuse that you are causing yourself. There's no, I mean, listen, you can go to therapy. How many times have I heard people say, oh, I've been in therapy for three years. I've been in therapy for eight years. Well, obviously it's not working. Why would you be in therapy that long? Well, I will say therapists will help you with what you want help with. So if you come in and you say, I want to find happiness in my job, they're going to meet you where where you are. So if that's what you're doing, the therapist is going to meet you where you are. So if you go in and say, I want to change my life and not do my job anymore. So again, it comes up to you, right? It's your, you're the person pulling the strings, right? Absolutely. And the first step is to make the commitment that you're not going to live that lifestyle anymore. That is it. Regardless of what your friends say, regardless of how your family reacts to your, what they're going to may deem as your craziness. You have to be so confident and strong in your decision that you're blocking everything else out. And it really goes back to kind of what I was saying, the 80-20. You got to do that flip. It all starts within the mind. It's a mindset. You have to have that mindset in place first. And if you don't have that mindset in place first, you have to find places, uh, whether they're coaches or academies, or mindset academies that are going to help give you the right philosophies and the right structure and the right help to put you on the right path to start clearing out all that old junk, all that unnecessary dogma and nonsense that we thought we've been led to believe that is just not true. You know, the other thing is that talking about your friend, that's like, while making a good living, but crying and stuff like that. What most people do in that scenario, Bryce, is they run and say, they say they leave that job. And then they said, well, let me look at what else I can study. Let me look at what else I can study. And I'll go to school for this. I'll go to school for this. And they get back into textbook mode. And what happens is, you know, they don't go on the journey. That's the, that's the thing. You, you know, they don't allow themselves to go on the journey because You'll never get fulfilled unless you go on the journey. It doesn't matter what you do. You could be a doctor and be like, I hate this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me go and find out and be a public speaker. And they try to work through these things or they get into network marketing because they're a doctor. They just try to figure stuff out because they don't, they're not able to go on the journey. So, you know, it, it's it's a lot of different things for people. But, you know, number one advice I would say to people if they're at that tipping point of like they're gonna snap. Uh, relationships are suffering as a result of it. Not enough money's coming in at the stage of your life. Um, then that's that's a that's a um, that's an indicator that you haven't gone through the depths of you to find out what your particular purpose is. So if you go to that part, not rush off to the local community college and say, "Let me take a course." You know, a course on what, right? Because yeah, you feel like, on myself, like if I eventually get educated, something will click. That's not how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. That's why there's still only such a small percentage of every industry, every every occupation, every retailer, every everybody that's always only less than, you know, whatever, just a small handful of people, industries make money because they don't follow those things. They provide those rules or those things for people to look at. But I would say, Bryce, the best call to action is if someone's ready to go, stop, take a minute. If you got a little bit of money, sit for a minute and process what the hell's going on in your life. 
You know what I mean? And say there. I love it. And I will say to you guys, and I'm going to make this very clear because I think what happens too is people try to do that and it gets painful. So they go back to what they know because the, just right. gonna say that. the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. But guys, think about patterning this way. Like if you've ever tried to quit smoking, if you've ever tried to change your diet, if you've ever gone with, if you, you know, did a sugar detox, there's pain involved, right? There's physical right, pain right, right. involved in changing those patterns. If you've ever trained for a marathon, that's changing a pattern too. So when you change your life patterns, there's going to be uncomfortable moments because you're in new territory. But it's just like training a muscle. The more you work through, and if you slip up, who you get back up the, on the horse, cowgirl up, or you know, get back up again. Absolutely. It's because it's going to take time to integrate those new patterns and allow that new thought wave. Um, and it's interesting you say, I, as you're talking to you, I keep thinking about the Bhagavad Gita because I, I'm a huge, the Bhagavad Gita changed my life, you guys. The first time I read it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's a, a battlefield and there's a chariot and he's talking to God, like, what is this? And it wasn't until I kept reading it over and over again and I started to really get into my adult life and processing my own patterns, which I'm still doing, that I started to find holy crap, how life-changing is this? And and in this, this story, guys, it's a small story where Arjuna in India, he's standing on the battlefield, he's a warrior, and he's having to face off against his friends, his family, his teachers he's loved and fight till the death for this piece of land. And so he's having this, this like come to Jesus moment where he's like, I don't want to do this. I, I can't do this. And so the whole Bhagavad Gita is this conversation that Arjuna is having with Krishna, who is the avatar of God in the story. And some of the things that Krishna says to Arjuna are very tough love. They're very tough love, but we get this concept of Dharma in the Bhagavad Gita and what Dharma is. And I do believe that human, we are made to create, we are made to work, but we've confused, we've inverted that, right? The, the powers that be, whatever, have inverted what that means. They've confused work with labor. Right. No, your Dharma is what you're here to do. And so it's, what passion. You want, your passion so you know my, my grandfather who was a surgeon used to say if you do what you love you'll never work a day in his life well lucky for him he liked being he loved being a surgeon he loved it he loved he loved it so for him it was a joy to wake up every morning it was a joy to work with his patients you know so it was a quality feel, filled life yeah so right. when we're looking at, and I love that you say, yeah, not everything needs a, a, a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, you know, we had our friend Catherine and Edwards and I interviewed um, a woman named Kathy. I can't say her last name on this platform, guys. But if you go on Rumble, you'll know who I'm talking about. Very famous um, person that's exposed some things. And she talks about when you process trauma, and we'll say even patterning, bad patterning can also be classified as trauma, right? Is to write it out. If you just start writing it out, like, right. and you take that that heaviness of thought and you put, not typing it, a pin, yeah, because that connects to the heart chakra. So you're actually writing out, I hate my job. This is why I hate my job. This is how I feel at my job. And then all of a sudden, as she says, and I believe it because I'm a big believer in journalism, all of a sudden solutions start to come to you. Yeah. How can I course correct? You know, and the other thing, I'm uh, speaking to in India, we went to India and the, we met with a guru and he's one of the things he said is like, look, you know, in your lives, meaning us as humans, as we grow through our lives, you're going to need five streams of income. This is real, everybody. I mean, wake up for a minute. I mean, for God's sakes, wake up. You can't rely on the job. Okay, let's say you're a married couple. One maybe works and they get an income. The other one works, they get an income. That's two. You're three short still. You have to have other streams of income. So what we did is as we got through India, we said, okay, well, how do we get five streams of income to, but not have to work five jobs? Right. And so that was always the, that's the trick. So that's what, see, that's the thing. People associate multiple streams of income to multiple jobs and that's not it. So that's why we started to say, look, you know what? Well, as we started to go through this journey, Bryce, of like learning how to do shows and things like that, we're like, well, that model works. We can be in one show one job if you want to call it and have as many streams of income out of this one show this one job and do it that way so this was a very effective way for us to learn 
how to get multiple streams of income without being intimidated. You know what I mean? And without feeling like we have five different jobs, we could spend the same whatever hour, right? Or whatever we do. And then we can say, okay, in that hour, the one hour on a Monday, we could talk about this coffee cup and get paid. One hour on Tuesday, we could talk about this iPhone, get paid maybe even more. And you, you see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is like the concept of a, of a show for people, imagine it as, yes, you find your voice, it's therapeutic, but you're also building your own store. Think about it from yeah. this perspective. You literally are building a store. So you, your show, look at it as a store that then all of a sudden audience now comes in, they're in your store. Or they say, I like these people. Um, I believe they're what's called a credible source of information because people buy from people that they like, know, and trust, right? So now because you have a store, they like, know, and trust you. When you start to talk about people or bring in other offerings or whatever, you have you start the things of multiple streams of income. Believe me, April and I are really resourceful. I think we would have found something if it was better than this, but I don't I don't know if you, <laughs> you know, that would give you that. that fits our lifestyle. This, yeah. it, this happens to fit our lifestyle really, really well. And so, I love, that's one thing I love too about working from home is I don't have to do the nine to five. Right. I get to, I get to schedule my own schedule. I can make my own, you know, and, and it's true. We're opening up my YouTube channel. I get to, I love to research weird shit. Like I love to, you know, and so now I can put it up there and you get sponsorships. You get all sorts of stuff going on. That's bringing in that income. And, um, and so, yeah, and I, I, I think, you know, how, you know, if you look at a child, I mean, I love, first of all, like toddlers, really young kids always crack me up because first of all, they remind me of drunk adults. They're mm -hmm. crapping their pants, spitting up on themselves, taking their clothes off in public. They're great. They're, they have no, no inhibitions, right? Right. They're just, they're just here. They're here, you know, like, <laughs> um, but as, as we watch kids play, like my sister is really good at that. She allows her kids to like, have a lot of play time she yeah. requires she makes them play because it keeps them in that creative mindset a child you know when you're little and you're playing and you're creating that imaginary world you've created is real in that moment and so i think what happens too is like as we get older we start to look outside of ourselves because kids always look within themselves right they're they're creating from within um the, our, our spark our sparkle gets stolen like don't let anyone st yeah. steal your sparkle and so i tell people what what did you love to do when you were a kid what did you love to do when you were well i love to play dress up okay well think about that was it clothes you love like what you know go back to what inspired you when you were young because that's going to tell you a lot more about and I think the problem is, is we often ask young kids, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Instead of saying, who do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. No, that's a good answer. That is very good. You know, it's so, yeah. I, and it really goes back to exactly what, what you're saying is it's flipping that table, the 80-20. Again, when you take that 80% of your time now to work on your own well-being and your that's where you all the ideas start coming from that's how the creative process the creative juices the creative engine starts to get turned back on but if you're running your body at 80 percent seven days a week and you're only left with 20 percent to turn that engine on it's gonna die fast you're Very gonna fast. burn out really 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 quickly you're tired you're exhausted your inspiration feels like you don't even have inspiration no you know, I, and there's like all these coaches and direct sellers out there that are posting all their stuff on the internet and you know we we say as a business we're like well you know keep posting because nobody's going to take you seriously unless you do what we i mean that's the reality of it people you have again if you're if, you know, and all those coaches and uh direct sellers network marketers whoever's watching this show nobody takes you seriously unless you do because i mean think about like what we've all done i mean we we didn't define ourselves by a product we had a show people liked us and trusted we had a very successful consulting company before the show we didn't have a website for two years but it didn't matter you yeah. know what I mean? Because we had a show and I that still don't have a website. Right. So I mean all still those have a website, yeah. Exactly. You know how it is. All those coaches, consultants that are like, where's my next client coming from? I can't get it. I'm posting on here. I'm doing this thing for you know, listen, you you, you know, if you're if you're serious about your business and you're on the and your business involves the internet. Uh, you know what I mean? Then you you really, if you can have a show, if you are physically and mentally able to get a show and you're not getting what you want, more than likely therein lays your solution, right? So 
You know, and I know I a lot of people just think about, you know, it, and it's not so, it, it's just the best way to do it. Like, that's how you, that's how you get that relationship going with people. And that, that reminds me too, there's another thing that Krishna tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, where he says, love the work for the sake of the work, not for the fruits of your labor. And that meant a lot to me too, because a lot of times I think what people do is they're running that hamster wheel just to make that paycheck. But we've absolutely done it. And that's why we have absolutely committed to never go back to it, because yeah. we were on the 80-20. We were running at mock speed. We were physically mentally exhausted i mean you're ringing the register but really what good is it if you feel like you're just totally spent and you're not even enjoying the fruits of what you're creating yeah, because you're if you if you are loving if you are loving the work and the pay comes it's like a double bonus because you know and and it's it's and it's interesting too because when when you're in alignment you don't have to force anything right, right? right. And, yeah. just, and i will say that was something my boyfriend when i first opened up my youtube channel I was all of a sudden getting on all these shows and my boyfriend said something to me. He goes, the interesting thing is you have not sought this out. You've just let people, people have just come to you. Right. And I was like, that's interesting because I was in my rhythm. I was in my, I was, in, I loved what I was doing. And yeah. I still love what I, I loved the sake of the work. I loved researching weird stories about giants and missing books of the Bible. I was, I'm so fascinated that the, 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 the studying was fun for me, you know? And so I wasn't, I wasn't out there trying to force anything. Right. Cause and you guys watching know what we're talking about when, when you're doing something you love to do, you get in the flow. Actually, that's something I will suggest too to people. I don't know if have we spoken about the book flow before Jay and April. I don't think no. I remember that one, Bryce. It is an incredible, I, I lent my copy to someone and I still have not gotten it back, but there is a book. I'm not even going to try. I will link this down in the description box below. I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, hold on one second. That is not the correct one. Um, there is a book called flow that is, um, here it is on Amazon. The guy's Hungarian. So I'm not even going to try to embarrass myself by saying his last name, but he is a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but he studied um he studied human the human mind mm. and human development for like 25 years i want to say it's been a while since i've read the book but for a long period of time he studied all these different cultures different socioeconomic backgrounds different job intensity to figure out what puts somebody in the optimal experience of flow where you've lost track wow. of time you're loving what you're doing and basically it does come to you're stimulating your mind in in something that your mind enjoys and that's what puts you in that and that's meditation that focused point of um, focusing the mind and it's very fascinating he even says in in this book too he talks about how people you know get to the weekend and the highest level of depression is in the weekend because oh, you're weekend. absolutely and your brain has nothing to focus on it's so, yeah. trying to solve problems gearing up for the morning of the next uh, you're actually in grief process for the next week to come mm -hmm. so it, i would also i'll put that i'll link that book in the description box below yeah. guys because it's a very <laughs> interesting scientific look at what we're talking about that might seem kind of woo woo right yeah, you just have yeah. The practical steps i mean when we when we sold our our financial services agency we were out of a job yeah. so we had to figure out what to do and so we used the show initially to start finding soul searching if you would but then what happened was this and this is a great thing for people to try on if that's, they're in that there that's how it started <laughs> that's how, really we were on our own search yeah and then um that's how it expanded but but this is how we, we were on our own spiritual um search we learned how to do so much stuff from it because we'd interview people and we never heard about this concept of life coaches and and intuitive guides and all this stuff i mean we're from a banking kind of insurance industry right so yeah. when people were like and we had to get licensed and regulated and people like oh they'd come on the show they're like i'm a life coach and i'm like and and our questions were like this to them how we're like you get certified well, for well, that. how do you get you don't need a license you don't need a license people pay you for that right. so we're literally unconsciously interviewing people like what the hell do you do and then what we did is we started to learn very quickly holy shit there's a whole world out there that people are making money because they don't need certifications because we came from a world of certifications mm -hmm. and when we went into a world that we no longer needed it and we had to question that it took us oh took we us, questioned it yeah a lot. we questioned every you mean you don't need a degree to do that right and you can still get paid that much money right. we're like hold i'm in <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean yeah 
So, but it was an eye opener to us. I mean, you know, from coming from that world to a very abstract world. So, you know, people can do that. I, I would say if you had a show, you start interviewing people. Like if you want to do it instead of learning it, ask people what they're doing. It's the best way to learn, right? Or not even <laughs> that. You could just start talking about things that um, you do that you enjoy doing. Like uh, you could be explaining a hobby or you could be right. sharing your cooking right. techniques or something that you excel in that other people don't, but they want to learn about. It could be photography. I, I, mean, I think I said on a show once, my aunt's a real estate agent and she has a client that's a multimillionaire and he has a YouTube channel. And I think I told you guys, you know what his YouTube channel is? He shows people how to clean carpets. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. There's so yes. much. Yes. There's His a face lot. Is even on the camera and it's there's no it's just like this is what you do for this oriental rug. This is what you do for this. And people and I, I've said that with cooking shows like uh, my sister is a busy mom and she loves to her her in-laws are Italian. So there's a lot of pressure to cook. And she's like, I just want someone to put a, a, a cooking channel up where they don't give me the backstory. Just I'm busy. Just tell me what to do. Tell me how to cook this. Just nothing you know you know and, and those types of shows people watch over and over and over again and of course when adsense that starts to, to to accumulate um hair there are so many uh oh, youtubes nice. showing people how to do like hair now yeah like, you, you, we Every, i mean it's endless you're right though but we're not designed to work we're here to find a purpose in our dharma if you like you said to call it and you know what is it because if we we came from i mean do you really think if we you just took, got it, dropped you know, here it's, it's such a, a um do work no if you took that philosophy and said what am i gonna instead of saying <clears throat> what am i gonna do for work and you just replace it what am i gonna do to create my passion yeah it, because that is that like you, you had mentioned your girlfriend who is literally like distraught every day it's because she's not in alignment with her heart's desire that's why Life she became that there. way you know you work yeah. you, you generally i mean i think inherently you know people say well not everybody's got the entrepreneur spirit but if you take a look at the concept of dharma and you have a purpose that you do yet yeah, we all work for someone as a as an experience like we have to learn somehow to do understand something so there's always a teacher which is i.e our employer that teaches yeah. us these things or we don't want <laughs> Yeah, but from there, by infinite design, we're destined to learn from that and create our own sandbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. you see what I'm saying that's really what we're supposed to be doing. I don't believe that we're supposed to stay there and get the gold watch in 50 years and die. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't, you didn't live your dharma. So, you know, if you can learn whatever that's your 20s and your 30s and then start to take a look at, well, I mean, I need to consider like my dharma now, or as you say, that's, that's the way people should their existence will be better and then they won't be like looking at like i'm just working for the weekend it's like it doesn't matter the days yeah exactly i i hate you know and i'm thinking i'm sitting there thinking too like i know so many people want to travel more i'm like well then be a travel vlogger you might not be able to book a trip trip to france right away but start filming yourself and do, do a day absolutely trip right. and, absolutely and research them and talk about it and just start build your channel from that you'll make more and more and more time. money where you can start and you can be, get then sponsored. Oh my God, did I lose you guys? Can you hear me? Hello? I think I just lost them, guys. Hold on one sec. All right, you guys, the building that Jay and April were in just lost, I think, their power. So we're going to go ahead and close this video, out, this video out today for part one on finding your dharma. So I'm going to give you a little bit of homework if you want some homework, if this has like sparked an interest in you to find your dharma now with your dharma i can't tell you what your dharma is your spouse can't tell you what your dharma is your teachers can't tell you what your dharma is your spiritual guides can't tell you what your dharma is only you can tell yourself what your dharma is and that's very simple it's something you're passionate about it's something that doesn't feel like work work it's something that you enjoy getting up in the morning to go and do and if that if you're feeling very lost and confused right now and you don't know what that is don't worry about it just take a deep breath at least you you know you've noticed that there's a pattern and i want you to start journaling now again i've always recommended the five minute journal where you write down things you're grateful for it really really helps but in the back there is a section just to journal your own thoughts and you can also just get a cheap notebook or something at the grocery store start journaling it start really thinking about your life as the quality of life versus what you're producing for others for your employer for whatever what's your quality of life like 
are you doing what you love to do every single day? And, and if not, we start to change that. Now, the answers might not come overnight. Again, we're changing patterns. And so it's going to be a little painful, a little bit uncomfortable to do that, but it's worth it at, in the end. So I want you to also, if you can, get the book flow. If you want to look at commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, that's a great resource as well. And just start journaling about these patterns that you've observed in yourself that are not are not healthy, mindset patterns, and then start figuring out what it is that would make you happy in your life. What activity could you do every day that would make you happy? If you had nothing to fear and failure was not an option, if failure was not an option, and money was not an option. What activity would you do every single day that you would love to do? And that's where we start. All right, you guys, if you have any questions about that, please leave that down in the comment section below. And we'll do part two next week where we'll elaborate more on this idea of Dharma and try to help you guys, those that want to be helped, figure out how to take your power back and figure out what it is that you like to do. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.